dignitaries from the foreign embassies, members of the Tumbe group, academic leadership of the university, my dear colleagues and dear students. My name is Ravi Tipparaju from the Health Communications Division, and I'll be taking you through this very special moment. Your Excellency, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, sir, your presence amongst us today has started a new phase in the history of this young institution. It gives us a renewed energy to progress, a great inspiration to achieve our dreams, and gives us a new dimension to our thinking. President, sir, his Excellency Dr. Kalam has written in his book, The Wings of Fire, and I quote, a dream is not what you see in sleep. It is a thing which does not let you sleep. And Your Excellency, I must say that our President, Mr. Thumbe Moidin, believes in your lines, that what you have penned in your song of youth, in your another book, Ignited Minds. Sir, I quote again, as a young citizen of India, Armed with technology and love for my nation, I realize a small aim is a crime. Your Excellency, these words are true to the nature of our president, Mr. Moideen. He is a dreamer and a visionary, and this institution is the result of such inspiration that he carries in him. Ladies and gentlemen, to begin with the proceedings of this very special event, may I request Mr. Sadaqtullah to come and recite from Holy Quran. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, may I now take the privilege of inviting our Provost, Professor Geeta Ashokraj, to stage to propose her welcome address. Professor Geeta Ashokraj. Our guest of honor, His Excellency Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, other dignitaries, special invitees, students, faculty, staff, on behalf of the President, Mr. Tumbe Moideen, the faculty, student, and staff of the Gulf Medical University, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you all to this most honorable occasion. Under the patronage of His Highness, Sheikh Humid bin Rashid al Noemi, this institute has grown from a single college offering the MBBS program to a medical university with six colleges and a research division for students from over 50 nations. With the addition of the Center for Continuing Education and Community Outreach, we have extended our resources to the non-traditional student from this year. Today, we are a community of learners made up of 505 full-time students who are looking forward to a productive and useful life serving the community as physicians, dentists, pharmacists, and physical therapists. They are taught by 208 faculty members distributed at five geographical sites, 
at GMU, GMCHRC Hospital, and Sheikh Khalifa Hospital in Ajman, the Umal Queen Hospital in Umal Queen, and Mafrak Hospital in Abu Dhabi. 80 full-time, 10 part-time, and 118 adjunct faculty in the Ministry of Health hospitals teach them. As part of its commitment to the community, the university has extended the portals of learning to the non-traditional learners in different areas of the health sector to train as medical assistants, medical secretaries, health information managers, medical billers and coders, medical laboratory, dental, pharmacy, physical therapy, technicians and assistants, among others. Ladies and gentlemen, today we have gathered to welcome an outstanding teacher, a scientist par excellence, <laughs> a scientist par excellence, an academician with a stellar rec track record who rose to join the planners of the country of his birth and helped to create the roadmap for transforming India, the country of his birth, from the global status of a developing to a developed nation. His excellence, His Excellency is today a household name, an oft-quoted example of an individual who rose from humble beginnings to pursue his dreams, achieved many honors, both academic and civilian, to become the President of India, the highest civilian position in the country. In spite of these honors, he continues to amaze us by the simplicity of his lifestyle, his humility, and his strong belief that the future of all nations lies in the hands of their young learning community, awaiting to be molded by the enthusiasm and inspiration in the hands of their teachers and parents, to be further set in the, brick, in, in the fires lit in the brick kilns of schools and universities, to further be honed in their journey as future leaders of the country who will soar with wings of fire and unleash the power within India to achieve India 2020, a vision for the new millennium, leading the country to further glory with their ignited minds. Your, Your Excellency, Sir, many of us will have the privilege of seeing and hearing you for the first time. Today, we as members of this young varsity are awaiting to be inspired by your words as we work hard to achieve our dreams as you have. Be able to emulate your sheer determination and your confidence in yourself as you carved for yourself your path to success. Ladies and gentlemen, hang on to his words and let them flow through your ears and play on your minds so that they leave behind a lasting impression that will inspire you to achieve greater heights in your chosen path. Remind you to be humble in your moments of glory and lift your spirits when you face difficulties to carry on in your work against all adverse circumstances and still reach your goal. With these few words, I leave you all to witness an event that you will cherish and recall from down memories lane to recount throughout your life. Uh, friends, I have designed my lecture to suit the students. I want to know where are the students? Uh, lift your hand. Lift your Acha, this is student, student, students. Okay. Upstairs students, eh? All of his students there. <laughs> oh, they're also here there. Okay, okay. First I would like to uh, greet His Excellency Sheikh Dr. Majid Al Niyami and Mr. Tumbe Moidin, President GMU and Professor Gida Ashok Raj and uh, all the members of the faculty and students and GMU family 
and all the friends who have come to this talk. <coughs> uh, friends, I was uh, in the Gulf Medical University the last one hour. I visited a number of the faculties and saw the clinical work. Also, I saw the research work. And uh, I happened to see some students. So I'm very happy to be in the campus of Gulf Medical University in the Ajman. I'm indeed <coughs> delighted to address, and I hope you have time to interact with the students and faculty of uh, Gulf Medical University here in Ajman. The city of Ajman uh, represents the union of history and modern technology and the fusion of rapid progress with the preservation of traditional values. I was reading about the Gulf Medical University, and I'm very happy to know that this is the only institution with its own teaching hospital in this part of the country, and that this hospital group is the largest healthcare provider in the UAE. I'm happy to inaugurate the GMU Information and Learning Center today. I visited the Learning Center, which is state of art and highly interactive, and an example of how information technology and medical sciences can convert to health community. My greetings <coughs> to all the students, teachers, doctors, professionals, and guests present here. Uh, friends, I, I am going to, I would like to share my views for the next 15 minutes on the topic, let my brain remove the pain. The topic I'm going to talk to you, let my brain remove the pain, because that's your profession. <coughs> uh, friends, whether you look at the future of a developed country, or a developing country, or a rich man, or a poor woman, there is one challenge common. The challenge is, how to keep the mind and body healthy? How to keep mind and body healthy? The world has witnessed phenomenal progress in medical sciences and treatment. However, as it is said in Tamil uh, uh, area, there are many areas to be explored. There are many mysteries in medical field you experts may call isopathic. Can the research done in the island of excellence across the world be connected? Can the experience of doctors be transmitted in much larger scale than now for the benefit of the entire humankind? With your close connectivity with India, and in particular with Kerala, there are alternative systems of medicine like Ayurveda, which need much more research stress. The cost of medicine has to come down Emergency medical care studies have to be exchanged for saving lives on time without permanent damage. How, how do we spread the preventive health messages? Finally, what would promote a healthy world will be a pollution-free environment, a stress-reduced world, and a healthy living. As a medical university, you would be working on the on these uh, areas. Fundamental to all this is a compassion. Dear friends, when I when I see you all, first of all, I would like to share one experience with you. When I was teaching in Gatton College of Business and Economics, Lexington, in USA, in the last April. One of my students, I had 85 students, one of my students asked me, Kalam, <clears throat> you have done many tasks. Tell me, tell us one task that gave you the bliss. She didn't ask me happiness. That uh, one task that gave you the bliss, the student asked me how to answer. It is important for me to answer. Let me share with you, all of you, when we, the answer what I gave to the, the student, it is like this. Uh, when I, we launched the first indigenous satellite launch vehicle, Assembly 3, it gave me a lot of happiness. 
when we launched Agni, it gave me a different kind of happiness. When I and my team had successfully tested a nuclear, nuclear weapon at the 52 degree centigrade in Pokhran Desert in Western India, it gave me great joy. When a team prepared the Vision 2020 document for transforming India, a nation, into a developed nation, it gave me a good sense of happiness. But still, the student was not satisfied. What, we, what, what, what gave me a bliss? That is the memorable event which I would like to share with you. During my visit to one of the hospitals in Hyderabad, I found, it's a Nizam Medical Institute in Hyderabad, where I found many children were struggling to walk with the artificial limb weighing about four kilogram, four kilogram. At the request of my friend, Professor Prasad, Nizam Institute of Medical Science, head of orthopedic department at that time, I asked the Agni missile friends, why we cannot use the composite material used for Agni heat shield for fabricating FROs, that is prosthetic for polio affected patients. They, the students, the, my team, they immediately said it possible. We worked on this project for some time and came up with the FRO for the child weighing around 400 grams in place of 4 kilograms, exactly one-tenth of the weight which the children were carrying. The, the doctors, doctors helped us to fit the new lightweight FRO, floor rear reaction orthosis on the children, and the children